Revelation chapter 11 verse 14 The second woe was past, and, behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Shalom, all praises, glories and honors to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Bacha Kodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of great millstone who have taught me this truth, as well as men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad, which means peace and mercy, to the elect of the nation of Israel, whom he so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners of the sea land of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad. To you I say Shalom, and Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, This lesson is edifying. In today's lesson, we will expand upon this article entitled U.S. Russia Nuclear Treaty Only First Step in Ensuring Future Quote Existence End Quote of Humanity, Professor Says. Uploaded today, February the 1st, 2021, the year of hastening unto the coming of the day of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Sputnik News. Now, I will not read this entire article, but I will only read briefly. And without further ado, let's get into it because <clears throat> the U.S. and Russia will never come to an agreement concerning a nuclear treaty because after the mark of the beast, which is the RFID market chip, has been mandated, that is when the third world's war, as we had just read in the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter, the 14th verse will initiate in a much larger scale between the U.S. and Russia. And Russia's allies and the nations in which Russia will be a guard unto. Pursuant to the book of Ezekiel, 38th chapter. 38th chapter. Excuse me. Now it says the total number of nuclear weapons both Russia and the U.S. could possess was limited by no start signed between the two countries in 2010 the treaty would have expired on february the 5th 2021 had the biden administration not agreed to extend it for another five years and the scripture says that, that his inward thought is that his house shall continue forever because these devils are trying to prolong their time and rulership but the heavenly father Yahweh through son Yahweh Shah is moving very swiftly things are heating up worldwide on a much larger scale as each new day passes by and we pray that the Lord hastens the day unto his coming and, and the destruction of this man's kingdom and the deliverance of the elect. Lord is willing, I am of the elect as well as you, brethren, out there. Okay? Because here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Because every day, every month, every year, this place waxes worse and worse and worse. And if the Lord doesn't come back and deliver us as it is written there would be no flesh to be saved therefore we need the Lord to return to deliver us Lord willing, I'm of the elect as well as you brethren out there okay but everything is according to the will and the timing of the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai now it reads Peter Kuznick is a professor of history at the American University 
where he found the, the Nuclear Studies Institute. He has authorized and co-authored numerous books, including the untold history of the United States, rethinking the atomic bombs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which were known as Fat Man and Little Boy. Little Boy was the first atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima, and Fat Man was the second that was dropped on Nagasaki with a much greater yield. Japanese and American uh, perspectives, excuse me, and nuclear power in Hiroshima. The truth behind the peaceful use of nuclear bombs. And there is no peaceful use. And not, neither will there be any peaceful use because guess what? The ICBM nuclear missiles are the weapons of Yahweh's indignation. And the Lord will very soon use it to utterly destroy the virgin daughter of Babylon, which is America. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 25. How foolish of you, Edomites, and regular people to think that these weapons of mass destruction can be used to create peace. How foolish of you. This is Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 25. The Lord Yahweh hath opened his armory. Now what is an armory first and foremost? An armory is a place where weapons, where instruments are kept, such as a sword, a lance, a spear, arrows and bows, so on and so forth. And the modern day armory represents the nuclear silos. And very soon the Lord is gonna open those armory to draw forth to bring forth the weapons of his indignation which are the ICBM nuclear missiles which are likened unto swords the Lord Yahweh had opened his armory and had brought forth the weapons of his indignation for this is the work of the Lord Yahweh of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans and where is the land of the Chaldeans here in America Babylon the great and the Lord is a man of war Yahweh is a man of war, Yahweh. Yah means he, Yahweh means exist. Through his son, our Lord Yahweh Shah, Yah means he, Yahweh Shah means delivers. Our men of war. For as the father is, so is the son, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, the king of kings and lord of lords. Malak, Shal Malakim, Wa. Lord of Lords in the Hebrew. Okay. So, uh, let's go to the book of Job. Chapter 20. Because the Lord is about to soon go to war. So, he's going to bring forth his swords out of their sheath. In other words, the nuclear missiles out of their silos. Now, when you look at certain movies, when a uh, king before his army pulls out his sword out of its sheath before the sun, the beam of the sun causes the sword to glitter. Job chapter 20, verse 25. It is drawn. The it is referring to the ICBM nuclear missiles. Where are they going to be drawn from? The armory, the nuclear silos. And coming out of the body, the nuclear silos, he ate a glittering sword coming out of his gall. 
What is the glittering, the glittering sword, the ICBM nuclear missiles? The Gaul again represents the nuclear silos. Terrors are upon him. Upon who? Upon the wicked, who is Esau or Edom. According to the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4, as well as the heathens, as well as two-thirds of the nation of Israel. But chiefly, this is referring to the Edomites, the elites of Esau or Edom. Okay, they're going to be terrified. That's why they're going to run and go hide in their underground bunkers. And they're going to tell the mountains and the rocks to fall upon them, which is a metaphor for them going to all these nuclear underground bunkers and hiding. But they're going to be found out by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through the Son, Yahweh Shai, and the elect. 144,000. Okay. Now, let's go back to the article. It says, Professor Kuznick tells Sputnik that the renewal of the No Start Arms Reduction Treaty No Start between Russia and the U.S. only days before it was set to expire is a positive first step in reducing the threat of nuclear war. And the scripture says, For when they shall say peace and safety in First Thessalonians of the Fiverr's Tree, then a sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And so the sudden destruction that will come upon this place via thermonuclear destruction will be likened unto a travail which suddenly comes upon a woman with child in the ninth month when she's about to, to deliver that child. It will come suddenly and it will come instantly. Even as a swelling upon a high wall whose falling cometh suddenly as it is written in Isaiah the 30th chapter. Because guess what? Russia is going to go back into that USSR state. Okay? Like it's written of in Ezekiel the 30th chapter. They're going to remember, the, you know, their hooks. You know, it, it's going to draw them back. And they're going to remember their latter state as being the USSR, being a, a chief enemy against America, Babylon the Great. And the scripture says that the least of the flock shall draw them out. So it doesn't matter what you do or what you might try to sign. Eventually, what's going to cause this war to really pop off is the least of the flock drawing the U.S. out. Who is the least of the flock? The Amalekites who dwell in the land of Israel. And they are going to create slash cause a conflict between Iran, which is modern day Persia, that will result in a all out war that will cause the US to then become a guard onto the state of Israel, and which will then cause Russia to retaliate and become a guard onto Iran and the rest of the nations written of in Ezekiel 30th chapter. So, all roads lead to prophecy. And all roads lead down to the will of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai being fulfilled. So, it doesn't matter what you eat and might try to do. Because at the end of the day, you're playing, you're all playing into the hands of the Lord. You can't outsmart the Lord Esau. You can't. Okay. However, Kuznick argues far more must be done in order to avert disaster. Especially at a time when US Russia and US China relations are worse than they are or worse than they have been in decades and things are only going to get worse because right now we are in a season of war, We're not in the season of love. These nations are preparing for war, the third world's war. Ecclesiastes Chapter 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Verse 8. A time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. And we are in the time of war. We're not in the time of peace. We're not in the time of love. We are in the time of war. Hence the reason why all these different nations, such as China, 
Russia, Iran, India, Pakistan, North Korea, have been beating their plowshares into swords and their pruning hooks into spears. Which is a metaphor for them taking their economic wealth and using it towards the enhancement and the development of weapons of mass destruction in preparation for the Third World's War, which they will all soon fight after the Mark of the Beast, which is the RFID market chip, has been made mandatory. Okay? Because that's a major prophecy, man. The chip has to be made mandatory first before the prophecy concerning the Third World's War comes to pass. But in the meantime, we will hear and see of wars and rumors of wars. But the Lord said that what? That the end is not yet. Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, the natural Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. And all the men of war draw near. Near where? The valley of Jehoshaphat there in the Middle East in the Arabian Peninsula. Joel chapter 3, verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. So now we know where they will all gather. So again, verse 9. Proclaim me this among the Gentiles. Prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Pete your plowshares into swords and pruning hooks into spears. Now plowshares and pruning hooks are instruments of agriculture, which now in the modern day represents a country's economic wealth okay in which they are beating this is a metaphor for them using it using their economic wealth into enhancing and developing new weapons of mass destruction and your pruning hooks into spirits let the weak say I am strong that's why all these nations are preparing that's because they know that war draws near, man. Okay? A war that will be fought with burning a fuel of fire. Isaiah 9 and 5. And this will be the last scripture. For every battle of the warriors will confuse noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be burnt with, but this shall be, be with burning a fuel of fire. So ancient wars were fought with spears and swords and men having armors on and running towards each other cutting each other's arms off and cutting each other's through and all that but this war the thorough's war shall be fought with burning and fuel of fire because the day cometh that shall burn as an oven Malachi last scripture chapter 4 verse 1 I know I said last scripture previously but the spirit for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud yea and all that the wickedly shall be stubble <laughs> Man, I got to get one more after this. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And who, is, who are they that do wickedly? The Edomites, two-thirds of the nation of Israel, and the heathens. They shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up via thermonuclear fire. Save the Lord Yahweh of hosts, that I shall leave neither root nor branch, because nothing will be left over here in America, Babylon, the great. Nothing will be left over America. Babylon the Great, after the Lord has utterly destroyed it with thermonuclear fire. Psalm 21, verse 9. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord Yahweh shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Because you see, the Lord is coming back with fire, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. It reads to say, For behold, the Lord Yahweh will come with fire, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. Via the chariots, so called UFOs, which will be shooting out concentrated rays of light, also known as laser beams, as well as through the ICBM nuclear missiles, which are the weapons of the Lord's indignation, as we had read in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 25. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord Yahweh plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord Yahweh shall be many. And oh man, oh man, will it be many, man. It's going to be a lot of slaying, a lot of killing, a lot of slaughtering. 
Jeremiah 25, verse 33. And the slain of the Lord Yahweh shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be re lamented, neither gathered nor buried, but they shall be dung upon the ground. So the time is coming, man. The time is coming. The time of death and, and, and great destruction is, is, is coming. Okay, so with that, I pray this lesson was edifying. Spirit just had me, you know, go longer. The water of Yahweh by Shemiah was shafting and inspiring me with his Holy Spirit to do this lesson to edify the elect. Lord's willing, it was edifying to the elect. Lord's willing, until the next, say Shalom to the elect. Shalom.